Um, I actually brought material. <laughs> so I have six copies of a book uh, from the Canadian government. One side of it's called uh, Preventing Child Abduction. The other side's called A Handbook for Left Behind Parents. So what I have to tell you is that unlike Chile, if you're going to want to run away with a child, don't come to Canada. Yeah, um, because we actually uh, send children back all the time. Um, the thing that you should know in terms of the speed with which we try and deal with Hague Convention matters is that if you understand a little bit about the composition of Canada, you can actually get matters done more quickly. What you need to know is that we have two uh, forms of law. We have common law for most of Canada. We have the civil law system in Quebec. So you should know, if you're going to actually try and uh, return a child from Canada, are you dealing with the civil law system or the common law system? Important to know. Canada's been a, a signatory to The Hague since 1983, um, but that doesn't mean anything because then it takes time for every province and every territory of Canada uh, to become a member, but they are all now members, so you should know that. Even Nunavut, which is our most recent territory in uh, or none of it. None of it. None of it. We have none of it. Yes. Um, so important for you to know that each province is separate in terms of the way it deals with applications. So if you are trying to have a child return from Canada, A, look at a map, figure out um, what province, what jurisdiction you're dealing with. I have had an awful lot of calls saying, you know, there's a child in Nova Scotia. Can you deal with this? And, and I have to tell you, that's 5,000 miles from me. So it's hard to do, and I, uh, you know, we need to try and find the right place to go. So most important, every province, every territory has a central authority. Everyone deals in a slightly different way. Um, but their goal is always to act as the liaison to ensure that children are returned as quickly as possible. Um, I did a paper. I don't know whether the papers have been made available. They're going to be. They're going to be. So I have a, a fairly comprehensive paper that outlines uh, an awful lot of the case law. But the most important thing to know is that the Canadian courts have been absolutely consistent in that Hague Convention applications are not custody applications. Uh, custody is to be determined by the court that eventually has jurisdiction, but not by the court that's hearing the Hague Convention application. Uh, one difference I heard from listening from, uh, to Anita from uh, New Zealand, uh, we're also a cheap country. We don't provide legal aid for everyone who wants it. If you don't qualify, which means you have a penny or two in your pocket, you will not get free legal counsel. Um, but there have been lots of applications where because these are such important applications, uh, lawyers in our jurisdiction will at least do them uh, on a much reduced fee or pro bono uh, without requiring any cost. I think the most important thing that's happened in Canada in terms of our ability to return children quickly, it has been the involvement of the courts. Our judges now have a protocol where they speak to other judges regularly. And I have to say that the Hague Convention protocol has now spilled over into those cases which are much more common in our courts, which is where children are moved from province to province. Uh, that's not covered, obviously, by the Hague because we're assumed to be the same country. Um, but the judges can now pick up the phone, phone a judge in a, in a corresponding jurisdiction, try and work things out with a realistic uh, set of, of facts before them and determine what should happen and how it should happen expeditiously. None of our legislation has time limits in it. Um, so there is no requirement that it be done in six weeks or 60 days or, or whatever. But the jurisdiction is very clearly spelled out that it should be done as quickly as possible. Um, every province, as I say, will do it slightly differently. But virtually all applications will be heard 
at our superior court level, uh, whatever that might be called in each province. Uh, and obviously there are appeal provisions available in every province as well. So um, that's probably all you need to know. Don't tell your clients to come to Canada um, with their children. Um, and we'll try and send them back as fast as we can. That's two comments. I mean, Canada is probably the most effective country under the Hague from what I've seen in every country in the world. Uh, I tried to go to Canada with my daughter as a single parent. And they stopped me from going in and held me there for almost a half hour. We check everything out with passports and everything else. I had all the passports, I had everything else, and I knew what they were doing, so I kept my mouth shut and I knew Which, exactly. That is. <laughs> <laughs> if I told them who I was and what I was doing, they wouldn't have let me in there. Okay. okay. Come on now, five minutes back. But interestingly enough, I should say, we do require people to sign um, forms if you intend to take your child out of the province at all, out of the country at all. And that becomes a huge issue for those of us who practice in family law because it means every client we've had for the last probably 15 years is back seeing us on a regular basis to get these forms signed because even after a divorce, even after a custody order, joint custody, a court order is not good enough for our uh, passport control people. Um, so there must be signed designations. Just a little point though on that one, if someone is actually driving across the border to our neighbors to the south, that's the United States of America, um, nobody looks at those signed forms. Um, and so you can actually drive across the border without a signed form. You only have trouble getting yeah, back in, exactly which right. seems to me a bit ironic, but uh, that's the way it works. <laughs>